Good morning, good morning, and happy Sunday from the farm. Welcome to another episode of Thinking Outside the Soil, where I get to talk story and touch on topics about hydroponics and the farmers who grow the crops and creatures we need to eat. And I am your host, Shani Alfalfa Seed. Thank you for being with us on this beautiful morning. The daylight is getting longer here in Colorado, which means our girls are laying more eggs. And it also means that we need to make sure people are getting those eggs. We're talking to some new customers lately. This uh, Mexican restaurant that makes some really, really good breakfast burritos. And in speaking with the owner yesterday, he was like, yeah, just bring in the eggs as many as you can and i'll buy them up as many jumbo eggs as you've got i will buy everything and so i said okay well i'll see you tomorrow (laughs) tomorrow being today and he said well today's the super sunday's the super bowl and i thought in my head i said oh that's right it's a holiday uh i guess i'll see you monday and he said okay sounds great bring me all the eggs you got and i often forget when i talk to people who are not farmers and are still even related to the businesses that we're in that uh, we don't get holidays in the same way and the chickens don't know what day it is. Yet I am told that rest is really good for all of us and have been encouraged to take Sundays off as best I can. So for me, that means I get to do all of the morning chores by myself and it's awesome. We get to spend a little bit more time than we normally do when everything's just in the flow, in the groove of working. Chance to just sit and think and take a break. And then I also do my best to take care of my mental health. Uh, I teach some yoga, I do a little bit of different types of calisthenics and then I try to walk my little Boston Terrier but real quick while I've got you if you could be so kind as to leave a review about what you've enjoyed so far or perhaps why others should listen in too so leave a review in the boxes below and please do rate the show so others know In thinking about taking time off, I have thought about some of these Sundays that I've been speaking about a little bit, who I am and about myself more so, and sharing a less structured and intimate way of meeting all of us and bringing us all together. Last Sunday, I left off with my experiences of meeting my mentor, Dr. Harry Ako, and those experiences were fantastic. Three years after arriving in Hawaii, I graduated with a degree in molecular biology with a focus on plant biotechnology and crop production. I was fascinated by growing plants hydroponically and especially growing novel plants. I love plant breeding and all of those things. But during those times when I was graduating, I was also still struggling with being an alcoholic. And uh, I found myself at the bottom of the bottle a lot at the end of my college career. And it took me to some really, really dark places. I was homeless for a while. As a college student, I tried to live in the rainforest. Uh, I was robbed by homeless people a couple different times, lost all of my stuff, made some really poor choices. Uh, by trying to sneak around and use other people's showers. And it was a really interesting time of my life. It was dark in the sense that uh, I had this mixed focus on what I wanted to do. And I knew that I was coming back to Colorado. And I think that I was trying to do as much as I could subconsciously to escape from the now I was living in. Part of what I was experiencing was some extreme pressure 
from my academic advisors, part of our degree program required us to present novel research. Now, what's really cool about that is I was pursuing an undergraduate degree, my bachelor's degree, but it was required, according to Harry, that his students present novel research. So I got to do all this stuff with farmers, but the biggest thing was that I did this research project where I optimized an aquaponics system. So aquaponics has been around for ages, but it's since the 70s that we've really started to look at aquaponics as a science. The science of aquaponics was really brought to the limelight by Dr. James Rakosi. And so during my education, I spent a lot of time studying him and the other experts in aquaculture, specifically a gentleman named Claude Boyd. Farmers all around were using aquaponics and Harry's philosophy was we need to make this as sustainable as possible. Now, since day one of meeting Harry, he asked me, how come you don't know biochemistry? How come you don't know your biochemistry? How come you don't know your biochemistry? And I would repeatedly and over and over in my head think to myself, oh my goodness, I'm brand new. I don't know my biochemistry. That's something you do when you're a junior or senior in your uh, later years of school. That wasn't true with Harry. I needed to know biochemistry as soon as possible. And it's why he had me feeding fish because it taught me one of the basic biogeological chemical cycles that I needed to know. I needed to know nitrification. He wanted me to understand how the waste product from the fish was transforming into plant nutrients and what was the process that went on at every step of the way. Now, I used to like to say that uh, I grow plants with fish poop. And it's fun to say fish poop because as a professional, we don't get to use dirty words. But as a farmer, we get to say uh, shit without it being explicit, which is kind of neat. But when you're talking to different audiences, fish poop is fun. And I got uh, metaphorically backhanded by my Mr. Miyagi of Manoa when he would say this, how come you don't know your biochemistry? How come you don't know your biochemistry? Because if I would have known my biochemistry, I would have known the biology and how a, uh, a fish's basic physiological processes that uh, I would know what was in fish poop. Now, he never told me what was in fish poop. He just said, how come you don't know your biochemistry? How come you don't know your biochemistry? And he would say, where is the ammonia coming from? Thankfully, he slipped one day and told me where it came from. He said, most of the waste in aquaponics is excreted from the gills of the fish. It's kind of like how we breathe. Much of our waste comes out in the form of CO2. We breathe in, we breathe out, we breathe a lot of CO2. Respiration is how we lose weight. So it makes sense that it would be a similar process. So all of this ammonia that was coming out of their gills needed to go somewhere. And it led me down the path of understanding microbiology much more. And I had to learn about the bacteria that were doing these things. I got to learn about these general big species of bacteria called Nitrosomonas and Nitrobacter. There's also some other families in there, I believe, but Nitrosperia that we tend to overlook and gloss over at some times. Uh, but from the general idea is there's a couple families of, well, genre I would, be the be would probably be the better word, of bacteria that convert ammonia in a two-step process into a more usable plant nutrient. So we go from ammonia 
and our nitro simonis take it into nitrite nitrite now i got to learn through feeding fish is extremely toxic to fish and it will kill them very quickly and by quickly we saw when our nitrite levels got above four that within a day fish health suffered significantly the fish would come to the surface and it looked like they were gasping for air and that's because the nitrite in the water the toxic nitrite limits their ability to uptake oxygen in their blood system so it was we were seeing we got to see as Temple Grandin likes to remind me when I read her stuff, the animals can show us the way. So this animal behavior was one of the first things Harry taught us to look for. He used to calibrate our instincts in a weird, weird way by observing so much. And I got to learn that on that long, silent walk when we first met. Now what's neat about nitrite is that there's another species of bacteria called nitrobacter and i like to say they take it back to what we need for plants we go back to the nitrate which is what plants uh oh, it's one of the nitrogen species that plants uptake and uh, they do it they take nitrate more pre preferentially they they like nitrate more than ammonia without personifying plants too much they do prefer one over the other when they're both available in solution so i got to learn how did that happen how is that process going how do we manipulate the ammonia in the water what do the bacteria need to thrive and uh, how does that affect the overall operational system of an aquaponics farm how does it affect someone who wants to get into this industry to be as sustainable as possible. That's what the word optimization really meant to me and Harry. So he said, I want you to figure out a way to make this better. And he led me on a path to learn from an aquaculture engineer named Claude Boyd, who was looking at dissolved oxygen. I asked the question to myself and Harry asked me, what is it that the bacteria need to thrive and survive? Well, they need those things to go from ammonia to nitrate. So the nitrous ammonis need the ammonia, but aside from the ammonia, they need oxygen like most living species do. And oxygen is in high demand in any living system and what I got to learn was that the bacteria will take that oxygen before anyone else. The bacteria are very, very competitive. So the oxygen levels in the water were very, very important. Now, once those bacteria made nitrite, the other bacteria said, ooh, I have food now and I can take this food and all of this oxygen that is in this environment and make something that the plants will use. The plants get to use the nitrate and ultimately in an aquaponics environment, you've created a, an almost closed loop where the toxic elements of the water have been remediated by the bacteria and from uptake of the plants so that they can grow what you are trying to grow. What I got to learn from Mr. Claude Boyd was better ways to put oxygen into the environment. Now, an environment in an aquaponics system is the water. So I got I learned how to optimize the oxygen in the water of a fish tank as well as the grow beds in the other areas that water flowed like through the pipes and pumps i love this project it was 
so amazing because I had to think. I had to learn how to do all this stuff. I had to search. This is the first time I really learned how to read research papers for information and read between the lines and ask different questions and reach out to other professionals and say, hey, what did you mean when you said this? Can you clarify that? And after almost a year of study in between the academic work I had to do to get a degree, between the drinking I was doing to, uh, well, there's a lot of reasons and probably some I don't even know still to this day, but the easiest way to say that would be I was trying to escape from something. Much of it was the stress that I was experiencing and the fear of success. I have learned in recent years that I suffered a lot from this fear of success because I didn't know what it meant to stand in my own greatness. But thankfully, there's those that can show us what it means to be great. And if they can remind us on a consistent basis what greatness looks like, we get to build on those things. And it gives us the ability to better stand on the shoulders of giants. I got to stand on the shoulder of giants for a year looking at aquaponics and it gave me such an intimate look that by the time I was required to present my presentation for aquaponics research, we called it the biotechnical studies of an aquaponics system. By the time I presented that mouthful of a presentation, I was so well prepared that I won an award for best undergraduate oral presentation in 2013, April 2013, at the College of Tropical Agriculture and Human Resources and College of Engineering Research Symposium. It was really fantastic. And I'm so grateful because that experience taught me what it meant to do good things in my life. It was something that I really needed to see and do and be. And it was a way that I see today critical thinking is important to teach. Now, when I left school, I still struggled with some of those challenges of alcoholism. And next week, I will share a bit more about how some of those challenges transformed me into the person that I became to be today. But that is all I have for us today on this gorgeous Sunday. I'm grateful that I get to be out here today with the chicken chatter. I actually broke my remote microphone, so I haven't been able to float and walk around to share what it is that we've learned and who it is that we are here at Blooming Health Farms. If you've enjoyed this or any of the previous episodes, please follow the show leave a review, let others know why they should stay too. And don't forget to check out the links below. We've got a lot of goodies that are associated with the show. Thank you for being with me on another episode of Thinking Outside the Soil. Join us again tomorrow. Take care and have a lovely day. Hey, before you go, check out the links below, leave me a rating and review, and follow the show. 
Don't forget to get yourself some of our Blooming Health Blended Sprouting Mix. Our mix has been shown to get the best eggs and create the healthiest flocks. With feed costs going up, right now's the time to lock in a subscription so that you can get the best eggs without having to go to the grocery store or the feed store anymore. Check out the links below to get yourself some Blooming Health Blended Sprouting Mix.